let's take some time and review. This is our third review. It's over chapter four. It's over systems. Test tomorrow. The first question, and I want to emphasize the directions. It says, decide whether or not the ordered pair satisfies the system of linear equations. How am I going to figure out, or how am I going to show somebody whether an ordered pair satisfies a system? Plug it in. Plug it in. Okay. So I will do that on this first page. I have negative 2 comma 2 and I want to see if it satisfies 2x plus y equals negative 2 and 4x plus 2y equals negative 4. Okay, I'm going to plug in negative 2 for x and positive 2 for y everywhere they are. So I'm going to get 2, well, I'll just write it down. 2x plus y is a negative 2. That means 2 times negative 2 plus 2 is supposed to equal negative 2. Simplifying, that gives me negative 4 plus 2. And negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. And sure enough, those are the same. So it checked in the first e equation of the system. The second equation of the system is 4x plus 2y is negative 4. So that's going to be 4 times negative 2 plus 2 times 2 equals negative 4. Four times negative two is negative eight. Two times two is four. Negative eight plus four is negative four. So I've simplified the left-hand side. It turned out to be the same as the right-hand side. So my conclusion, my answer is, does it satisfy it? Yes. Your answer to this question is yes. All of this is the work that supports yes. Wait, can you speed it up? Mm -hmm. So you would have to have work similar to this to get credit for the answer yes. If either one of them is no, then the answer is no. Is that okay for question number one? Okay. Back to the review for a minute. On the review, now they are, the problems are grouped. The first two, it says to solve it by graphing. When you take a test, you will have a grid for number two and a grid for number three. You don't have those probably with you right now, so you're at a disadvantage. You're just drawing a hand-drawn graph. I, on the other hand, have a grid. Lucky me. All right. The first equation in number two is 2x plus y equals 1. And the second equation is 2x plus y equals 4. And I'm asked to solve this, and I'm asked to use the process of graphing. First equation. Is it okay with y'all if I do slope-intercept? Is that okay? All right, I'll subtract 2x from both sides, and I get y is equal to negative 2x plus 1. Where will I begin? At 1. And my slope is negative 2, and I put it over 1, which means down 2, right 1. Let's go ahead and get the second equation ready. If I subtract 2x, subtract 2x, I get y is equal to negative 2x, whoops, I'm 
sorry. Having a little technical trouble here again. Not sure what it is I touch to do that. 2x plus 4. So where will I begin? At 4. And my slope is negative 2 over 1. Now, in order to get credit for questions that say use graphing, you have to do the graph. But look at these two already. They're not the same line because they have different y-intercepts. But they do have the same slopes. What do you already know about these lines? If they have the same slope, parallel. parallel. They are parallel. OK, so I go back up here, and I try to remember my information. OK, on the first one, I begin at 1, and I move down to right 1. And I can continue that pattern as often as I want to to get a nice collection of points. And draw my line. And I kind of miss some of the points, so who knows what's going to happen. The second line said begin at 4 and go down to right 1 down to right one. So I do that same pattern and I get a pair of parallel lines. You are not done. You are not done until you identify the solution. What is the solution? Where do they intersect? They don't intersect. That's your answer. If you don't write that on there, you won't get full credit on the problem. You have to tell me there is no intersection. There is no solution. Just put in, just like you do in math lab. Is everybody okay with the system and the graph? Okay. Then let's look at number three. Once again, it's to be done by graphing. I have incorporated a grid here. On your answer sheet for your test, I'll have a grid. And we have y is equal to x plus 3. And we have y is equal to 3x plus 1. Where will I begin on the first one? At 3. How will I move? What's the slope? It's 1 over 1, which is up 1, right 1. Second equation, where will I begin? At 1, and my slope is 3 over 1, which means up 3 over 1. It was nice. In this system, they were already in slope-intercept form. Okay, I'm ready to go. The first one, I begin at 3, and I move up 1, right 1. My second line, I begin at 1, and I go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. And it was kind of handy that I actually landed on that other line. I have a nice graph, but I don't have the answer yet. What is the answer? It is, yeah, it is that ordered pair, and that is the point 1, 4. It's hard, perhaps, to see it from, the, from your desk to this screen. But you do need to be able to identify that point correctly. How could you check it? Is 1 for x plus 3 equal to 4 for y? Is 3 times 1 plus 1 equal to 4. 
Yes, I'm plugging those numbers in and checking to see that they do work. Okay, so if I went back to the review, the first is to decide whether a point satisfies a system, plug in and check. Then I did two questions by graphing. The next two. How do you know the It'll be, it's given, it's way up at the top, it says negative two comma two, and then the system. For number two, there, we got that, we did not get a point. We got in. Okay. Numbers four and five, the instructions say, I know it's too tiny for you to see from the back of the classroom, but it says solve the system by substitution. So I have to use substitution. One of the systems will be ready and one of the systems will not. Okay, if I copy down number four, it is x plus y equals negative four and y equals negative two x. All right, we're supposed to do this by substitution. Is this one ready for substitution? Yes, that can be a value for y, and I'll take it to this equation, and I'll plug it in. So I'll have x plus, instead of y, I have negative 2x is equal to negative 4. So I just took this as a value for y and put it where the y used to be. What is x plus negative 2x? Negative x. It's negative x is equal to negative 4. Either just change the signs or divide by the negative 1, you get x is 4. Am I done with the problem? <coughs> the answer is no, because now find why? When you're using substitution, you should be able to go up and grab the circled equation as the easy one to use. It's y equals negative 2x. You've got a value for x. y is equal to negative 2 times 4. y is equal to negative 8. Sure. And I'm going to write down the ordered pair 4, comma, negative 8. Okay. Can you go back sometime and explain the same words? Do we got the negative x? Yes. The question was, where did I get this negative x? Look at the plain x. It has an implied coefficient of 1. Negative 2x, I subtracted, kept the sign of the dominant. Okay, problem number five, I am also required to do this one by substitution. Problem number five, if I copy it down, is 4x plus y is equal to 10, and 12x plus 3y is equal to 30. Is this system ready for me to do a substitution? No. Which of the four variable terms do you want me to solve for? I agree it should be that y. So I'm going to take that equation, and I've got 4x plus y is 10. Subtract 4x from both sides. y is negative 4x plus 10. I'm going to call this a new system. First equation is y equals negative 4x plus 10. And the second equation is 12x plus 3y is 30. 
is this system ready for substitution? This is an expression for y, and I'm going to plug it in right there. I have 12x plus 3 parentheses, negative 4x plus 10 is equal to 30. Using the distributive property, that's 12x. 3 times negative 4x is negative 12x, and 3 times 10 is 30. That equals 30. My x terms are canceling out. Automatically, you should feel like something's happening. We have 30 is equal to 30. That is not the answer, but it is an indicator about what the answer should be. What is the answer? Not undefined, but you're on the right track. It's one of those. It is infinite. It is infinite. What this really means is these were coincidental lines. These were the same line if you had done it by graphing. How did I know it was infinite as opposed to no solution? You could if you wanted to take it all the way to 0 equals 0, but you could stop right here. The fact that it's a true statement but the variables are gone is what leads you to believe it's infinite solutions. All right, let's look at number 6. Well, let's go back to the review for a minute. We're to the last group of twos, and it says solve the system by the addition method. One of these will be ready for the addition method, and one of them will not be ready. That's the way it's been with all the sets of questions. So if I go to number 6 and I write it down, I have 9x minus 9y is equal to 10 and 36x minus 36y is equal to 50. Is this ready for addition? No. Look at your x's. What's the least common multiple for 9 and 36? 36. And do you agree that I would simply have to multiply the top equation by how much to make it become a 36? 4, and it would need to be negative 4. So that wouldn't be too much work. So now I'll go look at the y's and see what that proposes. What's the least common multiple? It seems like the question's the same. Between 9 and 36 is still 36. So it's, it turns out that it doesn't really matter whether I'm trying to work on the x's or whether I'm trying to work on the y's. I do the same thing. That might tell you something. But let's just do it. I'm going to multiply by 4. In my head, I am targeting these x's, even though you can't really tell that. And it can't just be positive 4, can it? It has to be negative 4 because you need a different sign. Negative 4 times 9x is negative 36x. Negative 4 because I want to have a pair of opposites. Yes, it's positive, so the top one has to be negative. All right, negative 4 times negative 9y gives me positive 36y. And don't forget, negative 4 times 10 is negative 40. The bottom equation does not change. It's 36x minus 36y is 50. Well, I was trying to make the x's into opposites, and I did. I happened to get the y's as opposites also, and that gives me 0 on the left-hand side when I add them. Equal sign, what do I get when I have negative 40 and positive 50? Positive 10. That's not the answer. That's an indicator of the answer. That's a false statement. What's the answer? 
we're going to say N, which really stands for no solution. These two must have been parallel lines. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, say it one more time. Exactly. I didn't mess with the bottom because the least common multiple was the bottom number, so it didn't need to be changed. Okay. I do know what you're saying. If you had problems like 2x plus 3y equals 8 and negative 7x plus 4y equals 9. If I had a system like that, the least common multiple of these two is 14, and I'd have to change both of them to turn them into 14s. Okay? The least common multiple here is 12s. I'd have to change both of them. We just have to decide what to do. But these would require both changing. The test will most probably be just like the review as far as difficulty. But really good question. This is when you have to change both of them. All right. Number seven. <clears throat> We're still in the addition method. <coughs> Excuse me. And the problem is 2x plus y is equal to 8, and 3x minus y is equal to 7. Is this system ready for the addition method? Yes. The y's are already opposites. <coughs> so I will go ahead and add. I get 5x, y's are gone, is equal to 15, divide by 5, x is 3. I'm halfway done because now find y. Which equation should we pick? Well, there's not one that we should pick, but we've kind of gotten in a habit of just grabbing the first one. So if I take 2x plus y equals 8, and I plug in x is 3, that's 2 times 3 plus y equals 8, 6 plus y equals 8, subtract 6 from both sides, and y is 2. What's my ordered pair? 3, 3 comma 2. Okay. With <laughs> I believe in 4, 1, 4, 2, and 4, 3, you answer the questions all with parentheses. But when you do section 4.5, you don't. It sure will. It will count it wrong. All right. Going back to look at the printed review, which will look very much like the test, you have one question where you're testing to see if a point is a solution. Plug in and check. You will have two questions of graphing. One of them will be in slope-intercept form. One of them will not be. You will have two questions to do by substitution. One will be ready for substitution and one will not be ready. You will have two questions to do by the addition method. One will be ready for the addition method, the other will have to get modified. And remember, answers to systems are either an ordered pair, an infinite solution, or no solution. I should get one of those as an answer to every question that says solve the system. All right. The last three questions are word problems. All right. On these word problems, I will read each one of them out loud. And it's it, the first one. This is number eight, and then I'll go and we'll, I'll read it again, but it won't be on the screen. It says, one number is five more than another number. If you add 10, to 2 times the first number, the result is 3 times the second. You're supposed to find the two numbers. Okay, I'm going to go to a blank page. 
and I will reread it from my piece of paper here. How many numbers are we looking for? We're looking for two. I typically then will call one of them X and one of them Y, and I think it is vitally important that you identify what's what. These two numbers, they're referred to as one number and another number, but it's helpful that they're also referred to as the first number and the second number. Every time I read about the first number, I'm going to use an X. And every time I read about the second number, I'm going to use a Y. I'm also going to be, this is going to be the one number, and this is going to be another number. Okay, so here we go. One number is, one number, X, is, equal sign. When you get to the verb, that's your equal sign. Five more than. 5 plus another number. Y. One equation. Second equation. If you add 10, so I'm going to put 10 plus, to 2 times the first number, the result is equals 3 times the second. 3Y. Is everybody okay with the system that I've come up with? Okay, that's an important, critical first step. The second most critical would be, can you now solve that system? What method will you choose? Because it's up to you. I agree substitution would be the way to go because of that first equation. Do you see that this is what x is equal to, so let's plug it in, the place of x in the second one. So I'm going to have 10 plus 2 parentheses, 5 plus y, close parentheses, is equal to 3y. Whoops. So that's 10 plus 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times y is 2y. I use the distributive property, and that's equal to 3y. I add the 10 and 10 for 20, plus 2y is 3y. But I have y's on both sides, so what can I do? Subtract the 2y, subtract 2y. That gives me 20 is equal to y. <coughs> And I think I'm, question? No? Okay. So now find x, and I choose to grab this circled equation up here. x is equal to 5 plus y. Whoops, I did it again. And that means x is equal to 5 plus 20. X is 25. If you were doing this in my math lab, you would answer with these two numbers separated by a comma, but they would not be written as an ordered pair. That's just the way it changes directions. I would, but I don't think it's a requirement. So, Make sure that you name your X and Y, that you can use those then so that when it says one number is five more than another, and if you add 10 to two times the first, the result is three times the second. Okay? Let's look at nine. If I go back all the way to number nine, I'm sure you can't read it from the back of the classroom, but I'll read it to you. It says a chemist needs 90 milliliters of a 47% solution. That's what he wants to make, but has a 22% and a 67% solution available. How many milliliters of each should be mixed together to get the desired solution? So back to my page for number nine, and I will draw my beakers. 
I've got some stuff. I'm going to add some stuff to it and make a whole bunch of new stuff. All right, I'm going to start with the percentages. What do we have? We have a 22% and a 67%, and we want to put a certain amount of each one together so that the concentration of the mixture is 47%. Now, the volumes. How much of each of these? And I do not know, so I will call them X and Y. How much of this mixture am I trying to come up with? 90 milliliters. To write the system, start with the outside, with the volumes. What is the first equation? X plus Y is 90. If you add the milliliters of the first one to the milliliters of the second one, you're supposed to get 90. The second equation has to do with the concentrations, and I will multiply concentration times volume. So 22x plus 67y equals 47 times 90. That's the system. That's it for the system. Now, if you wanted to, you could, instead of having 47 times 90, you could have the product, which is 4230. That's the system. Now, if I'm going to solve this system, what method would you like me to use? <coughs> okay, substitution, and it works very well, very nicely. It's not quite ready, but it's not ready for either method. So what do you want me to solve for? X, okay, I will solve for X. If I have X plus Y equals 90, I'll subtract Y from both sides, and I get X is equal to negative Y plus 90. I have a new system, I have x is equal to negative y plus 90 and 22x plus 67y is 4230. We've chosen to do this by substitution, so I'm going to take this expression and put it in the place of x. That was supposed to be an arrow. It's a blob. So I have 22 times negative y plus 90 plus 67y is 4230. Now I have already done the multiplication. I'm going to have negative 22y plus 1,980 plus 67y is 4230. Combining my like terms, I have 45y plus 1980 is equal to 4230. Subtract 1980. I get 45y is how much? 2250. Y'all might think I'm a whiz because I can do all this in my head, or you might acknowledge that I have all the numbers written down. I'm cheating. Divide by 45, and y is 50. Yes, ma'am? I have t negative 22 and positive 67. So I subtracted and got 45. If you take the 22 away from the 67, you get 
45. Is that okay? Okay. Now, find x. I choose the circled equation. x is equal to negative y plus 90. Plug in. x is equal to negative 50 plus 90. x is 40. Yes, sir? It, the sign in front of the y was a negative. Okay? We've got one more. Okay. Le pardon? It is. It is a long problem to come up with the solution, but it's not long to come up with the system. All right, last question. We did not do one exactly like this, but I think you'll find it to be a pretty friendly question. It says, a vendor sells hot dogs and bags of potato chips. A customer buys two hot dogs and two bags of potato chips for $6. Another customer buys five hot dogs and four bags of chips for $14. Find the cost of each item. Okay, find the cost of each item. So when I go to problem number 10, and I use X and Y, I'm going to let X be the cost of a hot dog. And I'm going to let Y be the cost of chips. Now, if, if you're working at a concession stand and somebody comes up and says, I want two hot dogs and two chips. Don't you do the mental math and say, oh, two hot dogs, two times the cost of a hot dog, plus two chips, two times the cost of the chips, and you come up with the amount, $6. You can write it as dollars if you want to. Then the next customer come up, comes up and says, I need five hot dogs. That's 5x plus four bags of chips, 4y, and that value is $14. I have a system. Is everybody okay with this system? Okay. Let's solve this one by the addition method because we haven't used it in a little while. What's the least common multiple for 2 and 5? 10. Do you agree that I would have to change both of the equations? Okay. What's the least common multiple for 2 and 4? Four? 4. And I'll only have to change the top equation. So I choose to work on the y's. What will I need to multiply this top equation by to turn this into a negative 4? Negative 2, and that's my number. <laughs> Multiply negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. Negative 2 times 2y is negative 4y. Equal sign. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. Don't change the bottom equation. 5x plus 4y is 14. What's negative 4x and positive 5x? x. The y's are gone. Negative 12 and positive 14 is 2. Oh, and I didn't write that. All right, I have the cost of a hot dog. How am I going to now find y? I've got to pick one of the equations. Oh, I'll pick the first one. 2x plus 2y is 6. That's 2 times 2 plus 2y is 6. 4 plus 2y is 6. Subtract 4. That says 2y is 2. Divide by 2. 
and the cost of the chips is one dollar. So I have that the hot dogs are two dollars and the chips are one dollar. You will have three word problems on your test and they will be similar to those.